Welcome to You Talk. I'm Megan Demolina, school counselor at Noble Middle School. Our show is all about the middle school student. Testing, bullying, dating, stress, and so much more. We discuss it all. Joining me each month is a dynamic and engaging panel of middle school students ready to discuss the issues and tackle the tough questions. We kick off our show with some Q&A, featuring questions on a variety of topics from middle schools throughout the school system that our panel of students are ready to answer. No question is too tough, no topic is too difficult. All right, panelists, here's the first question for today. My parents are thinking about moving. I want to, but I'm in eighth grade, so that would mean going into high school without knowing anyone. I'm really nervous. I know my parents won't listen if I ask to stay one more year, but I don't know what else to do. Please help. Well, if you're a certain kind of person, it, friends might be easier. But if you're not that, if you're not a person that makes friends easy, um, easier than other people, then it might be a little bit more difficult. But as long as you welcome people that seem like they could be nice or get to know people, I think you'll be fine. Great suggestion. And so also, what, oh, sorry, you can go. Ahead. Um, what I think is is that I actually moved here from New Jersey, and it was tough because I had friends, and then I had nothing. Um, and what I just did was I kind of tried to be me, just just be me, and see if people realize that I'm actually like okay, <laughs> I'm not just that new weird kid. But um, and if they do, then I try to be like really kind and nice to them, so they can become my friends. So it's really nice to have that. Kindness wins every mm -hmm. time, doesn't it? And, and even yes. being yourself really does matter in any situation, whether you, you're new to school or going into a new um, area or state or town. Um, it's really important to have those coping strategies to transition smoothly. Sounds like your personal experience has gone well so far, right, Matt? Yes, yes, it has. <laughs> Great. Another way to like find people to hang out with is to join clubs. Um, Perfect. I yeah. like. I don't know. I like. I played lacrosse last year, and I met a lot of new people, and so it really helped. You c you can also ask ask people walk up to people and like, "What's your name? My name's Ava. I came up. I'm at. I was at my old school, Ogden Elementary, and now I'm here. And I was wondering if you want to be my friend or something like that. Exactly. It, and having those communication skills yeah. really are critical for. Um, a new environment, a new surrounding, and wanting to kind of be a little bit more outgoing and putting yourself um, out there to meet people and open to meet people. So that's a great suggestion, Ava. Thank mm -hmm. you. And everyone that you should meet should be accepting of you. You don't. You shouldn't have to change yourself right. just to fit in with people. Because that's when tough. I came here, mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, um, Ogden, I wasn't a very popular person. I was just one of the people that normally hang out in the library and read books and had friends based on books. And I was kind of like that in, si in sixth grade, but when I decided in sixth grade, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to change because I wasn't the most popular kid and most people didn't really like me that much. So when I ch came here, I was like, you know what, I'm going to see if I can try and make more friends just depending on how I can change. But now that I'm in seventh grade, I realized that wasn't the best decision and I'm more people like me now which is great <laughs> I actually have friends that accept me for my book self which I love <laughs> your book so. and ac academic self is, exactly. is, is really something to be proud of absolutely yeah. and it is hard to be in those situations where you start to feel like you're changing just to fit in or to be popular yeah. or to be liked and it's so um, wise and thank you for sharing that uh, Maggie I appreciate you being um, confident to say you know that happened to you and that you really had to kind of take a second look at it and um, make sure that you are true to yourself and um, people will like you for who you are um, in any environment any surrounding let's look at another question that we have here I'm having trouble with my sister because she bothers me all the time the first time it happened I tried to stay calm the second time I started to get angry and the third time I try to tell her to stop, but when I tell her to stop, she starts crying, and then my mom punishes me, and not her because she thinks that I'm the one that caused the problems. This happens every day before bedtime, and it's been so annoying to assume all the responsibility. How can I tell my sister to stop, and how can I tell my mom the truth? 
Well, I Is this well, familiar to anybody? Yes. yes. Well, I, I, am okay. I am that Tell little sibling. I am that little sibling because <laughs> I'm, I have a twin brother, and he's older, sadly, but um, he's only 20 seconds. People are like, that doesn't really make a difference, but to us, it really does. So, and I'm, out of four of us, I'm the youngest, and all my cousins are older than me, so I don't really have anyone around my age as a girl because I'm the only girl. So I'm kind of the one that wants to, I guess, not trying to annoy them, but goes on there trying a little strong, saying, hey, I want to play with you guys, and I guess it's annoying them. So I can relate to the little girl in this story. Sure. <laughs> uh, um, I actually have a little sister, and what I've learned is I, I like to annoy her on purpose. and, and <laughs> Thanks for your honesty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yes, yesterday, um, she was painting her toenails, and I walked in, and I like kind of put my foot in her way, oh, and she got mad at me, and then, and then she told on me, and then every time you do something like that, you I would get told on, and then, and then like if I walk in somewhere where she is, you don't even have to do anything. She just knows, all right, she's gonna do something to me. I just gotta go tell now. Yeah. Um, I'm the middle child. You are. And oh, no. So I have two sisters, and. Um, my youngest sister is interesting, so I can do the littlest thing, and she always gets her way. She just cries, and then she's, my mom thinks it's my fault, and I get grounded. But um, one thing I would do is, um, if she's doing something that is irritating you, mm -hmm. don't feed into it, and just go to your parents right away and say, this is the deal. I don't want to get into an argument, and I don't want to get in trouble. But sure. I need you to do something about this because I might feed into it and I might get angry. Right. Okay. Making sure you kind of pause right. before yeah. a, a yeah. situation yeah. increases or intensifies. You know, that's think, really important strategy. Okay. Think, think before you say things. Yes, I'm yeah. not a girl, but I am this little girl in this story. <laughs> uh, you can identify and relate, right? Yes. I am the youngest out of three. I have a way older sister and a brother that's a year and a half older than me uh, <laughs> and I torture him to the death oh my God. so what would happen is is that we would go outside and we'd try to have a catch and then I would miss a ball and then I'd get angry because I'd say he threw it too hard but then he'd yell back at me and like you suck and like no I didn't and then I would go and and I'd tell my mom that he said that and then he would get in trouble so I get my way so it's pretty nice. <laughs> I, that happens Sometimes to me you so have many to times <laughs> because I play strategize, lacrosse. right? Yes. I play lacrosse and I'm trying to teach my sister how to play and she doesn't like it because I'm more experienced than her and so when I tell her to like correct something she gets really mad at me and ooh, it's annoying. It can happen. Well, that wraps, wraps up our Q&A at Utah here. Now coming up for our next segment, my co-host Paige Turner talks to the panel about social and emotional learning. And later in the show, we'll talk about holiday happenings, traditions, and more. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Get connected with your school system. Your School News covers news that matters for parents, guardians, and greater New Hanover County. Stories about preparing students for success in a changing world. Stories where students are achievers. Internship, I had to, we pretty much made a vehicle from spare parts and we, at first we made it so it just moved and then we made it so it was an electrical vehicle. Stories of teaching where every child yearns to learn. Today is all about STEAM. STEAM is kind of the key word to tying art into science, technology, engineering, and math. Your School News brings viewers more than eight hours of school news and information. Reporting on what's happening in the district, what students are learning, how the school system operates, and beyond. Your School News, only on this channel. Welcome back to Utalk. I'm Paige Turner, school counselor at Noble Middle School. Today's schools are increasingly multicultural and multilingual with students from diverse social and economic backgrounds. 
Social and emotional learning provides a foundation for safe and positive learning and enhances students' ability to succeed in school, careers, and life. For those who don't know, social and emotional learning is the process through which students acquire and effectively apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. On our show today, our panel will discuss the benefits of social and emotional learning and possible implications of these valuable skills being neglected in our schools. All right, guys, so have you guys ever heard of the phrase social emotional learning at all? No. I have not. No. No. Um, well, actually, there are five different kind of domains and parts to social emotional learning, and we're going to kind of look at all five of them really quickly. So the first one, you'll probably understand this lingo a little bit more. Understanding and managing emotions, which is like self-awareness. Yes. So are you guys, I don't know, maybe more in elementary school, where you guys did lessons or were taught about, like, you know, identifying how you're feeling yeah. and what we are did your that more emotions? In elementary school. Oh, we did a little bit, yeah. but not not like a big amount. Not I really did, never did it. Never did it. Mm -hmm. So, so for those that you maybe did it just a little bit or didn't do it, um, do you feel like you're pretty in tune with your emotions and you know how you're feeling and nope. and what's going yes, on? Yes, because like I'm, sometimes when I get really angry, I write it out, mm -hmm. and so I can go back and like regain my train of thought and so I'm like better and like that's how I control my emotions because okay sometimes I just lose it <laughs> yeah see for me that's not the case I I don't I'm not really the best of figuring out how I feel sometimes I am but other times I'm like I feel feelings I don't know what this is how mm -hmm. do I handle this well, and you bring up a really good point because these middle school years when you guys are kind of in this middle stage you know, you guys are going through all sorts of emotions and, you know, changes and you may be able to identify, you know, what your feelings are. You know, you may know exactly what triggered it and there might be some times that you're like, where did this come from? Why am I feeling this way? You know? Yeah. You know and if that's ever happened to you guys, all of a sudden you're yeah. like, whoa, I'm really sad or I'm yeah. really happy. Yeah, sometimes I just think about everything that's going wrong and that just makes me sad and I'm just like, why did I just think of that? That yeah. makes me confused because I don't know why it's happening to me. I'm just like, I don't, I didn't mean for this to happen. Yeah. Or sometimes I've accidentally said something or like something that I didn't think would be hurtful to the person. It didn't really like hurt them, but it wasn't the most. It, but you didn't realize it and you want them yeah. to tell you that. You it didn't, it was kind of a sensitive thing for them and I didn't really know. Yeah. And I said it and they're like, I could tell because they were talking and fine earlier, but then they just shut up all of a second. I'm like, you're like something just changed here. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm very sarcastic, yeah. and I have a very sensitive friend, so mm -hmm. I had to watch what I say around her. Because mm -hmm. oh. I, my best friend mm -hmm. is like, she's very sarcastic with me, so I'm really used to being around her and just making like, I hate you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we understand that we're just joking around, and I can't say that to my other friends. Right. So when all of a sudden I say that because I'm so used to saying it to my other yeah. friend, she'll take it the wrong way and like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to right. do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. what you guys are talking about kind of brings up one of the other domains, which is establishing and maintaining positive relationships, those relationship skills, which I think are huge for middle school, like being able to get along with your friends and, you know, being able to resolve conflicts. Um, have, you, have you guys experienced that where you maybe didn't oh, yeah. intentionally or unintentionally mm -hmm. Hurt some nice feelings and yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. So my brother, yet again, but this was like when we were younger, younger. Um, I was like six years old. My brother was seven, and we went outside and we were biking. Um, and then when I stopped, um, I told him, you know, like you're so slow, mm -hmm. like what the heck. And I was like in a joking manner because mm -hmm. I was like six. I didn't know. But then my brother just turned around and went home. Yeah. And I was like, what did I do? And you maybe didn't realize that what you said or how you said it was taken by the other, how it was taken by the other person. Yeah, and, and, you, and yeah. you usually don't know, like sometimes you just say it without realizing and then mm -hmm. you want them to tell you, well, that hurt my feelings and please don't do it again. So you know yeah. not to do it again to anybody else or yeah. him or her again. Have you guys ever heard of I messages, I statements before? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you identify a feeling, like I feel sad when you oh, say yeah. that to me, mm -hmm. and not I would really appreciate know. it if you would not, you yeah. know, and this is a, that's a really good kind of social emotional strategy 
where you are identifying your feelings, like, yeah, that really hurt my feelings. And this is, and you're letting the person know, and you're saying, this is what I wish would happen in the future, you know? Mm -hmm. And one thing to keep a strong relationship is to, like, don't hide your feelings mm -hmm. from that person. So if you're feeling sad or upset from what they said, tell them because maybe they can fix that and maybe they won't do it next time. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, the other um, kind of domains of social emotional learning are um, making responsible decisions. And as you guys are getting older, you're kind of faced with more decisions that you're having to make, um, some that are super, super important. Yeah. yeah, so like when I turned 11, my mom and dad were like, okay, they gave me so much more like leeway of what I can do, but coming with yeah. that, I also had so much more responsibilities because mm -hmm. they said like I was becoming a um, close to being an adult. Mm -hmm. So they wanted me to realize because before then I was fine. I had nothing I could do. So yeah. it was like really blocked in. Mm -hmm. But after that, they just like, let me do whatever I wanted, but I had to get a bunch of like work or stuff done before. Yeah. So I have a lot more responsibilities now. Absolutely. Yeah, especially since if you're in like seventh grade, like me and Macy, um, you get a little bit more responsibility from sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And um, for the past weekend, I had like my mom went out with some of her friends with my dad. So it was me and my brother home alone. Mm -hmm. And we had, we, asked them they said it was okay to have friends mm -hmm. and we were playing around and the, my brother's friends went to go leave they were playing around at the door and my black dog got down got out at like oh, nine o'clock at night we're sprinting down the road and we managed to find him yeah. but that wasn't a very responsible thing for them to do because yeah. they're kind of playing around and and especially since my dog loves to run to Bayshore yeah. So, <laughs> well, and that, you know, it just, you realize that, you know, you're faced with these situations and then so having to kind of figure out how to handle them. Yeah. Um, and that's really part of what social emotional learning is, is that it's kind of putting you guys, um, kind of equipping you guys with skills to kind of deal with life situations that are going to mm -hmm. come up. Um, you know, and that can be through role plays that you do at school, it can be through conversations. Um, there are all sorts of activities, but, um, but the studies show that the benefits of social emotional learning are really huge. Like if you're feeling good and you're communicating well and you've, you know, you're good, on good terms with your friends, uh, you know, people will go to school better and more, they're less disruptive, yeah. um, they have improved social relationships and higher test scores. Yeah, they'll be happier to go to school, yeah. don't want to go to school, they'll be happy to go see their friends and absolutely they'll be happy to go <laughs> yeah you're yeah. just happier yeah. all, all you know all the way around and so yeah. that's one of the reasons why it's kind of a um, big push to really start focusing on this more in school um, because you know although the the math and the science and social studies and reading and all the other subjects are super super important they're realizing that these other things that maybe are not touched on as much are super important too mm -hmm. because if you're not feeling great and you know, you're sad and you, you know, you can't, you're having bad, you know, relationships, friendships with peers, you're just going to be hard to concentrate and to focus on the, mm -hmm. the actual yes. classes. Yes. yes. What yes. do you think? If you have a bad relationship with somebody that's in your class or sits next to you or something, you can always say, you can always ask your teacher for a seat change mm -hmm. or you can always tell them how you feel and then be like, can you please change how you act around me or around anybody else? Yeah. But sometimes there are maybe are really good at hiding their feelings and maybe too scared or want to be popular and so they're like oh I don't want to go to the teacher so that's why I think they should be teaching that in mm -hmm. schools because people are so shy that they don't want to go up to somebody and and handle the situation so instead they they're there and nothing's happening so I think they should definitely teach that in class yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much, and I'm sure this will probably not be the last time you hear about social emotional learning, but appreciate yes. you guys' insight. Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, don't go away. When we return, my co-host will join our panelists to discuss the holidays and all they have to offer. day with
with New Hanover County Schools, The Morning Show. This Rise and Shine program will put a smile on your face and a spring in your step. Best of all, you'll start the day a little smarter. The Morning Show features an exciting six-hour mix of exclusive features, cooking, entertainment, news, science, math, and more. New Hanover County Schools, The Morning Show, educating all viewers to achieve today and tomorrow in a global community. Only on this channel. Welcome back to You Talk. It's that special time of year again. The holidays are a time for everything. Acts of kindness, annual holiday happenings, trends for popular gifts, and introduction of new gadgets. And the return of some old favorites like Tickle Me Elmo. So panelists, let's talk about what you have planned for the holidays this year. Well, um, our family has a lot of uh, we have our grandparents come down to us, and the fact that my grandma's moving soon will make it easier for us. And we have a lot of traditions, like where we go around the circle. It's kind of like Thanksgiving, but we all tell each other what we will. We open gifts in circles and tell each other what we liked about the gift and what kind of thought we put into it. So That's I think awesome. that would be a great thing. It's kind of a, an experience um, where the family gets to practice gratitude exactly. and showing appreciation not only for just receiving the gift but being able to tell the gift giver <laughs> <laughs> how you feel about the, the present or gift that you opened. That's great. Very My cool. family um, it's kind of like a secret Santa mixed with like a sock exchange. So what we do is we put names in a hat and then you draw a person. That person you get out of the hat you buy socks for and it's just like simple things that you do and it'll make them have a smile on their face. It sounds like a fun tradition. Yeah, it is. I went to a Christmas party and usually we bring toys for kids that don't get toys and then after the party the next day or so we, we go bring them down to the homeless shelter or Toys for Tots or somewhere and then we go donate them to them. It's also a, a season of giving back and, and helping others who are less fortunate. That's a great mm -hmm. neighborhood tradition and community event that yeah. I'm sure you look forward to every year. Yes. And for our tradition is, well, I'm Jewish, so we have a little bit different. So for Hanukkah, we have a present for eight days, one present for each day. I like that because with Christmas, you get like all these presents at one time, and then you just like go through them really quick. But with Hanukkah, when you get one present a day, you really get to like enjoy it and That's like really think about how nice it is. And then after the eight days are over with Hanukkah, the day after, we go to the food bank and we help out there for two hours. And it's the best part because we feel really good inside afterward and it's really nice to give back. Well, Absolutely. that is great to do things for the community and people out there because not a lot of people have stuff that they can do and most people can't really buy great gifts for people that they like or they try their best and maybe people don't appreciate it, but I think everyone that at least gets a gift or gives thought into mm -hmm. it should you know feel happy about it Absolutely. because they're helping someone yeah and if you always don't want to go to the store and go buy something you always just donate um, like a gift card or mm -hmm. something there Absolutely. I love hearing that your traditions around the holidays really do involve about uh, involve giving back and helping others and just knowing what that feels like and you know also enjoying the holidays and the special traditions that you have but um, learning that lesson early on in life that it really is about giving back and it makes you feel so much better yes. when you do, when you do. Um, what are the cool gadgets and the the wish list items for middle school students and kids these days? What are you all? What's okay. on your wish? So <laughs> wish mine list. is these new headphones. They're called Beats, and I like them because they're wireless and they have really good sound. And I play tennis a lot. So, and my tennis racket's getting a little bit small for me, so I want a new one of those. Outgrowing the old racket, right? Yes. <laughs> well, Hoping for, for a new one. For yes. most middle school kids, it's mostly about the games and stuff that are coming out. Like this, my brother saved up his money for a while, and he bought the new Nintendo Switch that came out a little while, because okay. he's been wanting that for a while, and he's a nice brother and lets me play it. So I'm, cool. I kind of <laughs> like it, and I think I'm going to see if I can try and get one for the holidays, because they're actually really good and they're not like Xbox controllers, big TV. It's just like this right. kind of little gaming thing that you yeah, can take everywhere. Mm -hmm. Very cool. One thing that's on my wish list this year is 
Hmm. I don't know. You haven't kind thought of about it, right? Um, <laughs> I really like Nike shoes because um, I'm very athletic. I run a lot, and so that's kind of something I want. Something that you're wishing and hoping for. Very I don't modest. really have a wish list right now, but my sister does. And she's in second grade, so she lets um, American Girl doll stuff and all that stuff. Very cool. Yeah. Mm. All the latest toys and, exactly. and uh, exciting gift ideas. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, what are some ideas or some events that are happening in New Hanover County that, um, or in, in the surrounding area that you participate in or have as well as like um, your family traditions, but anything that you go and do like the Airly Gardens or um, every year our family flotilla. does the we go to the flotilla every year because we have neighbors that actually participated in it last year and they were a spaceship oh cool. very cool and then we do go to Airly Gardens every year and we bring a few of our friends with us and we always That's get fun. hot chocolate and walk around the thing it's walk really around fun. the grounds yeah. That's like exactly seeing like the lights yeah, yeah. So, we do. so what we do is that uh, um, in landfall they have like these golf courses so what, we go out like late at night mm -hmm. when it's dark and we get some carts and we go around all of the golf courses and it's really nice and it's like fun because like you get to drive. And right. <laughs> Being with family and friends and just checking out the decorations and the lights. It's mm -hmm. fun and, and great memory makers. Absolutely. Well, that wraps up our program this month. I'm Megan Demolina. On behalf of my co-host, Paige Turner, and the entire UTalk panel, thanks for watching. We hope you'll submit questions to our show and tune in again next month for an all-new episode of UTalk. Happy Holidays! <laughs>